Hi, thanks for joining me for another video on Christmas cards. And hopefully you're receiving or you're viewing this video in enough time to make Christmas cards that you can send out. And if you don't want to send them out, you can always use them around your own home. Now, I'm going to recreate this one. And the reason being is because the video was lost. So we're going to recreate this. And of course, this comes from some wrapping paper that we had. You'll need, of course, to recreate this, you'll need a card that's either a greeting card type card or a postcard. You can create these. You want to use watercolor paper or mixed media paper because they will hold up to the water as well as the paint that you put on it. We're going to be using acrylic paints and the colors for that that you will need are white, blue, green. I'm not using any medium that has texture so for that we're just going to use extra paint on that. You'll also need a palette or something to put your paints on and if you don't have a small palette this is a like a, um, I think a cutting board, something similar to this. You can also use a styrofoam plate. Also, I recommend two paint brushes. These are small paint brushes. One is round and one is flat. This is um, a number four and a number 10, but paintbrush numbers vary according to manufacturers. So just two small brushes will do and also a container with a small amount of water in it and a paper towel if you need one of those. So what I have here is the cutout. Take your time and cut it out so that you have what you need. And of course this came from wrapping paper. It's really thin so it will not hold up to a lot of uh, liquid. You will also need some school glue and just some school glue and that will work for adhering the cutout onto your paper. The reason you're using that glue instead of stick a stick glue or glue stick is because uh, this paper has a little texture on it and it will sink down into the texture of the paper. The glue that is. Now on your palette just lay out a little paint. You don't need a whole lot. So I'm just going to lay out a little paint on this palette. And that will be all I'm going to need. And we'll get started. You're going to use a good little bit of the water. and a lot of white, so you're going to need quite a bit of white paint. And I'll just show you what my palette looks looking like. I'm using a really limited palette this time, the white paint, the green, and the blue. So my palette is extremely limited. You can pick these uh, items up at your nearest Five and Dime store. You don't want to spend a lot of money on that. Even if it's a department store, you can pick some stuff up from there. But these are crafting items so that you're not investing a lot of money in this. It's not necessary. All right. We normally work from the farthest distance up close. These little guys, I want to have them sliding down the mountain or a hill because they're having so much fun. So in the background here for the tree line, I'm going to use the green and a lot of water. So I'm putting my paintbrush in the water and straight onto my green paint. See how it's watered down there? I probably got way, I do, I have way too much green paint. I don't even need that much paint. So back here on the horizon, fold this so you can see it. It doesn't do any good if you can't see it. So the, the this is the edge of the card there. The horizon is going to be back here. And I don't want a ton of trees in the horizon. 
it can go sort of straight across not really because you can't see much in the horizon anyway and then I'm just going up and down for the tree line and we'll make these trees get smaller and smaller and smaller as they go there I probably could have did that the whole way So you see I didn't really use that much. It was more water in here than it was paint and that's fine because back there in the distance things are not so clear. Alright so we have that there and I'm going to go with the larger paint brush because now I'm going to make the heel or the mountain. I want these two guys to have lots of fun and I mean a lot of fun because they're sliding down a hill in the snow so I will go I'm going to position them somewhere around there and that is important I don't want to paint over where I got to glue them but I don't want to glue them down yet either so I'm going to take just a touch of blue and a lot of white okay now watch this just a touch of blue and a lot of white and I still have that blue over there that I'm not mixing it with I want to make sure I get the color like I want it I don't want it too dark you can always darken it some so now here we go here comes that mountain. Now watch this. Here it comes. Here it comes. It's got to go over behind them and then come out on that side. Okay, that's that mountain. Now I'm going to move this over here out of the way, just up here out of my way. I don't want to go past that because I'm going to glue them down in that space. So now I'm going to get just a tidbit more of this blue in here. See that? Make it a little darker. Now one thing I do believe when we paint, since we're, we're painting, we're making art, or cards, it's still art, do not paint over. We're not covering walls. So I should be able to see everything that you do. So I'm adding, I'm adding, adding. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. Look at that. I'm adding. And I'm going to wash that brush off. Because I don't want to get it messed up. You never want your paints to dry on your brush. It will ruin your paint brushes. Now we need the glue. I should have told you you need a sheet of paper and I don't have a sheet of paper handy so I'm going to use this paper towel. And the reason you need a sheet of uh, scrap paper is because you don't want the glue to get all over the surface that you're painting. I got a little paint on there so I'm just going to rub it off. Alright, we're going to open up this glue and put some on here, not too much, but just enough. Let you see what I got on there. Now, putting the paint, distributing the paint, I need it to go to the edges. I need it on every edge, every edge. So I'll take my finger and rub it outward, all the way on the edge. Be careful because it will start to curl if you get too, if it gets too wet which that's what it's doing. Now wipe your finger off on that paper towel and we're going to place these little guys on here because they're just too busy having fun. Right in that space and press it down then you can rub it gently to the outside to make sure everything sticks.
Make sure you have no glue on your fingers, then press it. That's it for that. Now we're going to work on the snow because that is done. We're going to leave this out there unless we want to make it look like it's snowing. We can make it look like it's snowing in that space by taking the handle of the paintbrush, dip it in the water, and in this space here that had the paint on it, see if it's not too dry, just using the handle of the brush, tap it here and there in this open space back here. That's all I'm doing. Now you will have to tap it in front of where you have the uh, greenery too. You can't tap it in just this white portion and not where the trees are. Because if it's snowing, the snow is going to come down and you're not going to and you're going to be able to see the trees through the snow. So just tap it here and there. And these are sort of like circles, but they're not They'll be different sizes and they'll mimic snowflakes. There. And that empty space there too. And wipe that handle off. That's good. Now what we're going to do, since we already have the makings in there, we're going to add more white to that paint there. So we just scoop out some more white in there and we're going to, we're mixing it over to the side. We don't want it too dark. We want it kind of light in there. Because we're going to add it to this. Add it right on into there. Now when you're painting, you got to have lights and darks. You don't want your paints to be all one color. They'll look flat. Everything will look flat and artificial. Notice, see how his little wing went right over the top of that paint? Because we put that line down first. So his wing now is right over the top of that paint. So it pushed that little heel back behind them which makes it look more realistic right up to the edge where they're at and if a little of the paint gets on the bottom of them that's okay now I still have some white of the card in these openings here I'm not trying to cover all of that up and what I am going to do that paintbrush is dirty I haven't cleaned it off I'm gonna come in here and get a little bit more blue so that I'm going to try to create a little dark, but not too dark. I want the darkest and the brightest colors to be on these two. That way, that remains my focal point. I'm just going to come in here. That's not dark enough. I'm just going to come in here and undercut a few little places to make it look like a darker shadowy kind of area mm -hmm. here and there not everywhere just here and there right off the page don't be afraid to run your colors right off the page off the page there and off the page up there will work just fine Years ago, I saw a young lady painting scenery on cards, and she used this really weird, nervous, nervous, jittery hand movements. And now I see why, because you want to create lines that are different. You don't want all the same lines. Now I'm going to take that other brush, remember I said this brush, and I'm going to use, now I'm going to use a ton of paint in different areas. For one, let me show you. For one, I'm going to come back here and add 
that's a bit dark. But I'm going to show you why I did that there. And rinse that off. There. Now I'm going to add globs of paint on here. So watch this. I'm going to come in here with my paint. Now that's my first glob. Let me show you what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to put it right here on his his little fin. See it there? It looks like he has a snowball. And now I'm going to place globs of paint right in here so it'll look like he's they were sliding in that snow. And remember now, if they're sliding in the snow, it's going to pile up in certain areas. I can always go back and add more color and more stuff. But I want to glob it up. Right in here, I'm going to have to do some more. I have to do it now because it doesn't look right unless I do it. I'm adding these little darks so that you can see those whites. And I want them to come down when they came down the mountain. Remember, they're going to leave a little weird pathway. It's going to be a pathway that they came down in. And let me wash that blue off of there. This is a wet on wet technique, which means I'm not allowing the paint to dry before I add more paint to it. And when you do that, you just got to keep adding. I'm not using brush strokes. Notice I'm not using brush strokes going back and forth or up and down. I'm just scooping the paint and globbing it on. So that's what I want to do here. And I'm going to do it over here too. Because I really want it to look like 3D. And it's best to tap and pat. Place that paint on there. It's a glob. added all that dark blue in there because I wanted this white to show up. And now I'm going to do the same thing in here. I'm going to go ahead and add globs in here too. And when it dries, normally I use stuff with texture, but I don't have any handy right now. And you may not have any. I use a lot of uh, sawdust. You can use sand, sawdust, and the stores will sell that sand. It looks like aquarium sand or something, or you can make sand out, art out of it. That is great for you to use for this purposes, for making um, texture. I also like to use coffee grounds. Mm-hmm. So if I've had coffee, I make sure I save some of those grounds to use for my artwork. Because it works really well. 
So I want it piled up here where, where they're at because they're sliding down. When they slide down, there's going to be a pile up of snow right in front of them. And these I'm putting there. And then I try to make sure the edges, left or right, kind of fades down into the card. That's all I'm doing. I'm adding globs of paint. Globs of paint. That's what I want to add. And that way, now when this dries, it's going to be 3D. It's not going to be flat. Oops. I miss and push that in the wrong way. And there we have that. Remember, it's going down the mountain, so you want to kind of trail stuff down. You don't want to um, create a totally different shape than what you have. And we can always come back. And what I'm doing now is I'm going, I'm coming back with a little bit more. I didn't clean the brush off. It still had the white in there. So it'll dilute that blue because that blue is really, really dark. And I'll come in and lightly add some markings here and there. Just the same blue that I already put down at the very beginning. I come back in so that you'll see it. Just a touch here and there. When you do, when you paint with white, uh, or we, when you normally when you paint a subject, that has a lot of white in it, especially in watercolor, you don't see that much of the white. You see a lot of the color that is being reflected in the white because white will reflect the color, the colors that are around it more so than other other um, colors. You'll They do reflect it, it's just that you don't pick it up. You'll pick it up when you are painting with white more so than other colors. I kind of like that. And that is close to the other one. Mm -hmm. I use a different technique for that. So on this one I made snowfall. I'm going to put some snow here on the tree line so I need a little more white so that it looks like the snow is kind of back there. I use a different technique. So here the ground is just I want it to look like the ground. It's not going to be straight and flat across, but it looks like the ground has piles or mounds of snow here and there. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Put a little more color right in there where his feet are. And pile a little more snow there because that snow should be piled up. Part of this foot is covered. On this outside rim is covered with the snow because he's it's piling up there as he slides down. See that? Makes it look a little bit more realistic. Trying to make sure I'm looking to see if this area is standing out. So what I'm going to do. I don't want it too dark, but I want it 
to look like they went sliding now. So I want it to look a little different than the surrounding area. That's how you do. Now, if you wanted to cheat with that, I have a. I put my white paint in the squirt bottle because I'm always using it. You can have that in a squirt bottle and just kind of squirt it along here and there. I love it when it dries. It adds such a nice look of texture on it. You can see it standing up off of the page. You'll see it when it dries. Okay, I hope that was fun for you. It's nice, quiet time creating Christmas gift cards that you can give and spread holiday cheer. Thank you for joining me. Until next time.